name is Carolyn McGettigan and I work in the Speech Communication Lab as a postdoc here at the Institute of Cognitive Neuroscience. I'm interested in all sorts of forms of vocal communication. My background is mainly in speech perception. I'm interested in how people understand speech, how we learn to understand, for example, unusual accents or when speech is noisy or degraded in some way. And I've been looking at how that happens in the brain with functional magnetic resonance imaging. So when we run an experiment in fMRI, um, we're actually picking up not the direct neural response to events or the things that people are doing in the scanner, but more the blood flow response. When your brain is working harder, or a particular bit of the brain is working harder, it's metabolizing more and it needs more oxygen, and therefore the oxygen is brought to that brain region in the blood flow. So that's our measure, really. One thing that I think is, is not always so effectively communicated in the media is what the results of fMRI experiments actually show. You'll tend to see an image that will show you that folded surface of the brain, so the, the folded cerebral cortex, and that might be in grey or something like that. And then you'll see a, a, an area of coloured activation that's sort of drawn on that, and that's reflecting the um, area of interest for that experiment. And you might see a sort of like a blob of activation on that. We often discuss blobs of activation in, in the community. What that shows you is a difference measure. So that little coloured bit of activation is actually the difference between one task or one condition in the experiment compared with another task or a condition in the experiment. So for example, if I had an experiment where someone's listening to sentences in the scanner and I compare the activation to those sentences with the activation when the, the person in the scanner is just not listening to anything and lying in quiet, you would see coloured areas of activation in the results that are in both sides of the brain, in the temporal lobes of the brain. But if I chose to compare my listening to speech with something else, let's say listening to other complicated sounds but that you couldn't understand as speech, you'd actually probably see a slightly different pattern of results. And what we tend to see when we do this kind of comparison is that you get more activation in the left-hand side of the brain in the temporal lobe. So that's really what I'm trying to say is that we do have these very powerful techniques that we can use to measure brain activity. But what's really, really very important is how you design the experiment. So whenever you're next reading a story on the news or whatever, when you've, you've seen this activation that might be in a particular part of the brain and it might be related to a particular task or way of thinking, you can always ask the question, well, how was the experiment designed? What do people do in the experiment? And, and what are the scientists showing us here in terms of what this result actually is?